Welcome back YouTube to my channel of an everyday life of an SB. If you're following me to my channel right now or you landed on my page for the first time today, for whatever reason it may be, I welcome you all. I'm Aspie. I'm all about creating mental health and awareness and just some fun things along the way. Obviously, as well, hopefully, when, when that time permits. I also do some tips and advice along the way of dispelling some of the myths and, and misconceptions about certain mental health disorders that comes into play of certain things that I want to raise up, sort of thing, put my hand up to. And also, I do about, you know, talking about my life stories and experiences with Asperger's syndrome and the like that comes into the territory with it, how I go with it and manage it, and just taking you all on a life journey, what my life is like with Asperger's syndrome and the like as much as I can do for what I go through in my everyday life. I also bring out some messages of hope or whatever messages, video messages you want to call these just to give you clarity, understanding and hope for the ones that it feels down and out with certain personal struggles that you go through in your everyday life regardless of what it may be. I'm just hoping to be your girl to support and mentor you as best as way as I can. And just to be in mind with the, some of the tips and advice that I give out to you may not deem it fit appropriate to you but it may deem appropriate for me and vice versa some of the tips that you may give to me. So it's all about give and take and respecting each other's differences along the way regardless of what it may Maybe. So just to give you a lie down, even though I have been trying to do some more research on these mental health stuff just to get some more out of the way before hopefully next year that I want to get into the other parts of, you know, just the basics introduction of the human biology and stuff for people that may want to learn more about the human body and that it's basically at this point of time is just to go about doing what we can when we can basically at this point of time and that you know do what we can to share it out with us just to put a disclaimer out there before I begin this is that I'm not a medical professional I'm just a normal everyday Joe blogs just sharing my life stories and experiences but if you see any signs and symptoms when it comes down to any of these mental health disorders series that I bring out regardless what they are seek professional help or medical advice you know, so that you can help yourself or your loved one. So enough of the day. This is postpartum depression part three. As I said, some of these will be broken down to step by step, and hopefully with these step by step guides, that it will be easy to follow, easy to understand for you all. So let's begin this. This one's all about basically the diagnosis and treatment stage or managing the P PMS. Premenstrual syndrome, as it's called, basically, or what have you, or shall we say, the postpartum depression, I should say, I sh of the diagnosis. <clears throat> Get it right. <laughs> Must be tired here, folks. Sorry. Okay, and the criteria, obviously, for this postpartum depression it is known to be in the DSM 5 manual, as known as the depressive disorder with post prepartum onset. Prepartum onset is defined as starting any time dur during the pregnancy or within the four weeks following the delivery of birth. There is no longer dis a distinction made between these depressive episodes that occur during pregnancy or those that occur after the delivery. Nevertheless, the majority of experts has continued to diagnose postpartum depression as depression with onset any time with the first year after delivery. The criteria required for the diagnosis of postpartum depression are the same as those required to make a diagnosis of non childbirth related major depression or minor depression. Those criteria included five, at least five of the following of the nine symptoms within that two week period, which are the following. Feelings of sadness, emptiness, and hopelessness nearly every day from one of the day or the observation of a depressed mood made by others. Number two is your loss of interest or pleasure in the activities that you so love and crave to do. Number three is your weight loss or decreased appetite. Number four is your changes in sleep patterns. Number five is feelings of restlessness. Number six is your loss of energy. Number seven, feelings of restlessness or guilt. Number eight is basically loss of concentration or increased decisiveness and number nine recurrent thoughts of death with or without the plans of intentional suicide or harm the differential diagnosis for your postpartum blues obviously as we know is commonly known as baby blues is a transient postpartum mood disorder characterized by male uh, depressive symptoms and postpartum depression this may occur you know type of depression may occur in the likelihood of 80 percent of all mothers following up the delivery of a baby symptoms typically result will resolve within two weeks. Symptoms lasting longer than two weeks are a sign of more serious depression. 
Another one to look out for is obviously also is your psychosis. Postpartum psychosis is not a formal diagnosis, however, just to be on mind, but is widely used to describe a psychiatric immune disease that appears to occur in about one in a dozen you know, pregnancies with symptoms of high mood and rising thoughts, mania, depression, severe confusion, loss of inhibition, paranoia, hallucinations, and delusions set in begin suddenly in the first two weeks after delivery. The symptoms may vary and can change really quickly, however, it is different from postpartum depression or any from me, maternity blows. It may be a form of bipolar disorder, just to be in mind. About half of a woman who is pregnant has no risk factors but a prior history of mental illness, especially bipolar disorder, history of prior episodes of pus psychosis or family history of this are at the high risk of this. It often requires hospitalization where treatment is antipsychotic medication, mood stabilizers, and in many strong cases of strong risk for suicide, electro Compulsive therapy. The most severe symptoms last from two to twelve weeks, however, and recovery takes six months to a year. Women who have been hospitalized for a psychiatric condition merely after delivery are at a much higher risk of suicide during the first year of delivery. Okay, the last but not least for this postpartum depression is obviously I want to conclude here is the treatments or therapies in place. So therefore, you know. Sometimes you can seek, you know, out support networks around you is the first one, obviously, or support groups. You can do support networks based on Facebook. There should be some on there for you guys or just support groups in your local area to physically go in and actually talk about your problems and have support from men and women alike. This is full. Okay, um, another one also is certain medications will be obviously of use to you. Some may suspect, again, as always, you know, like antidepressants, CSRIs, and some, you know, sort of, you know, sleeping tablets and all those form of medications. Basically, also, sometimes there'll be some home visits that can be, you know, given to some that really needs it, basically, for the mothers or fathers, basically, with a nurse or doctor or psychologist or whoever at that point of time, basically, can be effective. Okay, internet-based cognitive or behavioral therapy, regardless of what it may be, has been tried and tested and has been shown promising results with lower negative parenting behavior scores and those who did participate. You know, um, some other, like I said, for the forms of medications, there has been evidence shown or suggested that selective serotonin uptakes, your SSRIs, has been effective sort of thing for the treatment of PPD. However, the quality of evidence is low, given and based on few studies, you know, in patients. It has, however, remained unclear, however, with antidepressants are most effective for treatment of PPD and for whom antidepressants are for better option. Again, you've got to just bear in mind, seek professional help with your medical professionals if that the case needs. Sometimes you can go from of counselling is another one, number three, counselling with your counsellors, medical health professional, whoever, with your cognitive behavioural therapy put into place, maybe. Um, also, sometimes they say that some forms of supplements can be a good range of doing things. Eating right, diet, exercise, obviously, is the next best thing also for these last few parts that I'm sharing with you all. So this would quickly brief, briefs down to the, you know, treatments and diagnosis of the PPD. Give me a like for thumbs up for support. Comment below if I missed out anything that maybe it could be of value and use to others. Feel free to share these videos around to family and friends. Feel free to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Feel free to follow me on my social media sites, Twitter, Facebook, at the Unspool. Thanks for support. Thanks for watching. Do what you love, love what you do. As be signing out, and I'll see you all again soon. Ciao.